Today we have a new XLR mic to show you. And it might be the king. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I have a little teaser for you. Something in this scene right now is actually a tease of a video I got coming up very shortly uh, because I got a little trip that I have to go on. I don't know, you'll see. But today we're talking about the Neat King Bean. Now, if you're not really aware of Neat microphones, it's owned by Turtle Beach, but who actually runs this is really interesting. The people behind these microphones are the people behind some of the most popular microphones that exist. These are the guys behind Blue Microphones before Logitech bought them out. So anything like the Blue Ember, the Blue Yeti, the OG Blue Snowball, these guys were behind that. These guys are experts in audio, but also they are kind of pioneers in streaming and content creator audio. Now the King B2 is the the follow-up to the Neat King B makes sense and it's a really unique condenser microphone. The mic has a gigantic capsule and on the front has its honeycomb design hence B which has a built-in pop filter on that. All around it is a gigantic shock mount and the arm mount is actually on the back of it so you can just screw that in. And like I said it is a condenser mic. It's the first XLR condenser mic that we're doing on here so it'll be interesting to give this one a listen. There's a lot of specs on this thing that it might not mean a lot to a lot of you but it means a lot to the real audio file so I'm just going to put those over here so you guys can have a look at them. But why waste any more time? Let's give this thing a look and listen. So this is the mic right here and I was not lying it is a chunky boy. Again you want to keep it fairly close to your mouth and we've talked about it before a condenser microphone over a dynamic microphone. Going to pick up a lot more room noise. So this is more of a microphone for like a sound treated room, something like that. I have a noisy computer. That's my fault, not the microphone's fault. The area that I can put this station was limited. We deal with it. But the bottom line is this is going to pick up a really natural sound. Probably more natural than any of the microphones that I've tested on here before. However, we're going to have to give that a listen first. You're hearing before I am. So now there's nothing more to it except to do our famous test phrases to see how this one holds up. The small pup, not a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Hey, I don't think all of you guys are subscribed to this channel yet. Why don't you click the subscribe while we're doing this? Okay, so I'm going to go give this a listen and come back and share my thoughts. Hey, come on. I think that made my voice sound pretty dang fantastic, but it was very noisy. I was expecting that, so it's not like some kind of disappointment or something like that. And once again, not the fault of the microphone. It's the fault of loud fans, ambience in the room, things like that. If you have a nice treated room or you have a silent computer or you have anything like that, you're not going to have these problems out the gate. If you do, though, you're not lost right i mean this is what vsts are for so what i'm going to do now is we're going to go into davinci resolve we're going to apply some vsts but let's see what we can do with just minimal adjustments the small pup not a hole in the sock the fish twisted and turned on the bent hook press the pants and sew a button on the vest the swan dive was far short of perfect the beauty of the view stunned the young boy Hey, I don't think all of you guys are subscribed to this channel yet. Why don't you click the subscribe while we're doing this? All right, it's better, but not perfect. I mean, all the noise isn't completely gone, but it's a big improvement over the raw audio. But the real question is when you're streaming or when you're making a YouTube video or something like that, is that little bit of noise going to make a huge difference? So what I want to do, just one last time, I'm going to show you the version that had the VSTs applied, but this time I'm going to underlay some music so you can hear what it sounds like when there's actually music underneath it. The small pup, not a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Hey, I don't think all of you guys are subscribed to this channel yet. Why don't you click the subscribe while we're doing this? The small pup, not a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. The beauty of the view stunned the young boy. Hey, I don't think all of you guys are subscribed to this channel yet. Why don't you click the subscribe while we're doing this? And there you have it. A lot of people, myself included in the beginning, did a lot to compensate for the noise in the room because again, I have a very noisy room. I, have I said that enough yet? But I did a lot of overcompensating for that at the expense of overprocessing my voice, not realizing that the music is going to cover up a lot of that anyways. Now, obviously there is a threshold where you're still going to hear noise because the music can only be so loud without drowning you out. So what you have to do is kind of find that acceptable realm and save as much of your voice as possible. But what's most astounding about this microphone, given its size, its build quality, and it's just overall sound quality is its price. It's $169.99 US right now. That compared to a lot of the mics that I use, including this one right here, is just a flat out outstanding price. 
given its overall quality. Now you need to keep in mind that you're gonna have to have this connected through some sort of interface if you wanna hook it up to your computer. I currently have this hooked up to the Elgato Wave XLR, which we've previously looked at. And the Wave XLR right now runs for about $159.99 US. So together, you're looking about $330. Uh, this came in at $280, just as a comparison. So as a streamer, the only thing you really have to consider is what you want your setup to be like. If you don't want another piece of hardware in between you and your microphone, then you're gonna probably wanna go USB or something like that. If that doesn't get in your way and you've seen my desk before, it doesn't get in mine, then it's a perfectly viable option. This might very well be the best valued condenser microphone that you're gonna find. The only thing I would not recommend it for, if you're doing a podcast that is more than one person, but that's not just this mic, that's a kind of a general thing. Uh, condenser microphones are not great for multiple people speaking because you're picking up on each other's mics. You wanna go dynamic for something like that. But let me know down in the comments how you feel about this microphone. How does it sound to you? How does it look to you? Is it too big? Is it too small? Is it just right? Nobody's gonna say it's too small. It's quite large. And if you want to come talk to me about this device or any other device we've ever talked about or just come say hello, you can always come find me on twitch.tv slash miscastjoe when I'm streaming. And if you want to check out some more audio reviews I've done, we'll put one here and here and you can check those out at any time. Select which one. Oh, which one's it gonna be? Well, while you make that difficult decision, I'll just say one more thing. Let's get to work.